Hey, what's up guys, Clint here. Welcome back to the channel, CoCommerce. This is gonna be a video series, a complete series covering Material UI. So if you're not familiar with Material, basically it is a front-end component library that we can use inside of React. It allows us to write and create these applications incredibly quickly, especially if you're not a huge CSS guy, you're not a big design person. So it's used by a lot of top companies. You see here, uh, Spotify, Amazon, NASA, Netflix, Unity, etc. So in this series, I'm gonna show you how to install and incorporate this inside of a React project. Now I'm gonna be covering step-by-step, one-by-one, each of the components inside of Material UI. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. So here we are in VS Code, and I'm actually gonna be using VJS, just a React library. So what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and create our application, our V application. So I'm gonna type in npm create, and then we're gonna say Vt at latest. And then I'm already in the directory I wanna be in, so I'm just gonna put a period at the end. And now we can go ahead and install V. So I'm gonna be using React, okay? So let's scroll down to React. Then I'm gonna be using JavaScript. And that's it, you guys. This is how fast uh, it was to run. So let's go ahead and type npm i to install all the dependencies. And you'll notice this is incredibly, this is a great alternative to create React app. Um, it's really easy to use, it's really fast. So let's go ahead and type npm run dev. It's gonna spin up our development server. So let's just go ahead and open this up here. Let's command and click. So localhost 5174, we'll just type it in localhost 5174. And this is our landing page uh, after we create our V application, okay? So we can go ahead and stop that though. What I'm gonna do is just kind of clear uh, this up a little bit. So the index uh, CSS, um, we, we can go ahead and just delete all of that in there. We're not gonna use any of this uh, styling. We can delete all this in the app.css, okay? So next, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get rid of all this as well. Kind of scroll down a little bit. So if we go ahead and run our server now, npm run run dev, it should just be a blank white page here with no errors, okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and this is gonna be our, our boilerplate, our starting, uh, our starting point here. So let's go ahead and install Material UI. So let's go over to mui.com, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy this over right here. So let's start stop our server. We'll paste that in npm install uh, or npm i at mui slash material. We're gonna need the emotion slash react and the emotion slash styled, okay? So let's go ahead and install that there. Now over here, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. So let's go ahead and click get started. And then here we are. I'm gonna go down to closing get started. Let's go into the components here. So as you can see here, these are all of the components that Material UI has to offer. There are a ton of them, and we're gonna cover each and every one of these in this series. It's gonna be a long series, but we're gonna go ahead and start out here with the inputs, okay? More specifically, the autocomplete. Um, this is how you can you can basically style up uh, an input right here that has all of your data inside of here that's an autocomplete. For example, uh, if we're talking in The Godfather, it automatically filters for us. It's incredibly easy to use, incredibly powerful to use in your application. So let's go ahead and get started with this one here, the autocomplete. So here we are, we can go ahead and get rid of this right there. We can get rid of all this up here as well. Um, just gonna, gonna get rid of all that. So let's go ahead and kind of lay out our project here. So inside of the source folder, okay? Inside of the source folder, I'm gonna create a folder by the name of inputs, because that is our section here that we're gonna be using. And then inside of this inputs, our first one that we're gonna be using, just like we went over here, is the autocomplete. So I'm gonna go ahead and type autocomplete.jsx, and this is gonna be our component here. It's just gonna be a functional component. So. RFC is just gonna generate a functional component like boilerplate for us. And then let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and bring this into our app.js, whoops. So inside here, we're just gonna say, this is gonna be our auto complete. There we go, so just make sure that brings it in there like so. Let's go ahead and save. And, and, and here, let's go ahead and start our server back up, npm run dev. So you can see we have our component in here bringing in the auto complete, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to MUI. This is our our, um, our demo here. So I'm just gonna be kind of copy and pasting. That's a lot of what we do here uh, as developers. Um, so this is the code right here, okay? So let's go ahead and have, this is gonna have a list of films here, but let's go ahead and start off with this auto complete right here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over. I'm gonna paste that in here. So we're gonna need a few things. You'll notice right off the bat, this text field and also the com uh, auto complete. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that over as well. So I'm just gonna paste that in there uh, like so, okay? 
So let's go ahead and I'm, so I'm going to do this two different ways. So right now it's a list of objects, but I'm also going to have a list of strings as well. We'll kind of do both and see uh, the differences between the two. So let's go up here and I'm just going to say const uh, names here. And what I'm going to do is just paste in uh, an array of strings. So this is my array of strings right here. Let's go ahead and save. And so I just names, and then we have, um, we have five strings in here, five different names. Okay. So for the options here, I'm just going to replace this with names just like so. And we'll just get rid of that space there. We don't need that. And I'll just leave, well, I'll change this label. We'll change the label to names. We don't have to do that, but just to keep it semantic. Then let's go ahead and refresh. And now you can see this is our label here, the names. As you can see, we change it back to movies. So this is what the this is what that is there. We'll keep that to names over quotes there. So names, and as you can see, if we access our, our input box, you have all the names here. So that's an overview, kind of how we can use the uh, names there. So this is an array of strings. However, what if we wanted to use an array of objects? So let's go back over here to our example here. And I'm just going to copy over their, uh, their input here. Um, geez, I'm not going to get all these. I'll just get these right here, however many that is. So under here, I'm just going to paste that in there right there. Of course, we need to close off our uh, array. So let's go ahead and save that there. All right. So next, let's come back over here and let's see. Let's have a look at what we're getting here. So names. I'm going to change this from, I'm going to keep, I tell you what, let's go ahead and I'm just going to drop this down. That way we can have kind of two examples here. Let's give a little bit of padding. I'm going to surround these with something called a stack and then we'll have a uh, padding. Let's go ahead and do like this so we can kind of close it off and then we'll say um, padding Y and we'll get into stack here later on in the, in the series, but basically it's just allowing us to have a little bit of padding between here. So let's go ahead and drop this down here. So I'm going to say cut and we'll paste it down here. Let's go ahead and save. So now that should give us a little bit of space in here. <clears throat> we need to probably import stack here. Let's save. There we go. That was good there. Um, so actually we need to put, let's do this here. We'll say stack. There we go. And then we'll do that again, stack and then padding Y equals three. There we go. Let's go ahead and save. There we go. Then we have a little bit of padding. So for this next one, this is an array of strings or both way array of strings right now, but let's do an array of objects. Okay. So we already have our objects in here that we copied over from material UI, just this top 100 films array. And again, you see it's an array of objects. Each object has a label, which is a string, then also a year, which is a number. Okay. So same thing here. Let's go look at our example here. Uh, we'll scroll down. It's all of our array array there we go so what we can do here we'll just change our names here to uh whatever this is called which is top 100 films we'll say top 100 films just like that let's go ahead and save inside here so our label here is still named so let's just change this to uh films or some movies whatever you want to call it and let's have a look so now you can see we now have a, a list of objects in here and each object has uh, again has the string to it then also has the year available to it as well so a few more things that we can do in here right now, you can see we can select a movie. Um, but what if we wanted to select multiple movies It's actually quite easy. Let's go down here into our code and we can actually just put in here. Sorry. Let's on the names here. Let's do, let's do that on our movies here. You can do it on either ones. Fine. But we'll just say multiple, just like that. Just a multiple property. Let's go ahead and save. And now you should be able to create there. There you go you can now actually select multiple items there. Okay. And you see, we're just kind of filling up, uh, kind of filling up our films. We can also add a limit to it with a limit tags property here. So we'll just add that right here. We can say a limit tags, and this is just going to be an object in here and you can limit it by uh, whatever you like. So we'll go ahead and save that at two. So now you can see it kind of shows the uh, two objects in here. And then uh, without clicking on it, it kind of shows the plus three to show you how many other objects you have. So if we go and click on it, let's go ahead and add some more. We'll say uh, that's already in there twice. So let's say Lord of the Rings, The Dark Knight. So as you can see, it kind of adds up like that. And then we kind of delete them one by one. So that's how we can use kind of multiple items in here. So we can also have multiple values in here kind of by default, even if we refresh, we can have some values persist in there um, even with, without adding them in there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you how. So right here under multiple or whatever under here, what we can say is default 
value just like that. And then this is going to be an object here. And then we can have just our uh, array in here. So top 100 is the name of it. Top 100 films, just like that. So we can have the first one, for example, and then, um, let's go ahead and add another one. Top 100 films. This would be number one. So this should actually be our first two items here Shawshank Redemption and the Godfather. So if we go ahead and save that, let's we'll refresh. So you can see by default, it has these two in here, refresh, and they kind of just persist in there and, and stay in there. So lots of functionalities in here, lots of cool stuff. Um, we can also group these by name, for example. So if we kind of drop this down, we can kind of group these uh, by name A to Z. So let's go ahead and check out the documentation on that. Let's just kind of scroll down. Let's see. So I'll keep scrolling. I think this is the grouped right here. So let's just go ahead and copy this one in and we'll paste it inside of, I'm just gonna copy down this stack. There we go. Just kind of keep everything we did. I'm just gonna re replace this autocomplete uh, with what we just added in. So um, makes make sure we're grabbing the, let's see, first letter of the title. So we're using label. So let's just re uh, change this with a label, just like that and first letter dot compare. Let's go ahead and save and see if that works there. Are we getting any errors? Options is not defined. So our options here. So we might need something else in here. Let's go ahead and have a look at the code. Oh, there it is right there. Let's just copy this over. Go and copy that. We'll just paste it right in here. Um, option title, I think this is label. And let's go ahead and save that and we'll see how that does. There we go, no errors. Okay, so cool, so that kind of separates everything. You can see it has the numbers separated at the top, then kind of goes uh, in alphabetical order, all the, all the movies we have uh, by alphabetical order. And again, we can still, if you wanna add the multiple select, just like we did above there, we kind of come down here and we'll just say, um, we'll say limit tags, multiple, so let's just go ahead down here and we can say multiple then also we'll just do it like that limit tags let's refresh so pretty cool we can also change the width of these inputs as well uh, for example let's see right here you can see the width as 300 if we change that to 500 save you can actually see that when we get a refresh take care of the errors you can see that gives us gives us a lot more room to add uh, multiple movies here as well so this is the autocomplete uh, component here inside of material ui next we're going to be having a look at the button component